Uh, so after you start, if you don't mind letting them kind of introduce themselves so you can find out who it is on which department they work in. Yeah, and when you do that, Gabby, can you minimize the um, what you're presenting so we can see people? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so we're recording. Are we ready to get started? Yeah. Okay, uh, we're going to call this uh, meeting of the Finance and Development Committee of the Housing Authority of the County of Monterey to order at 5.03 p.m. Um, uh, and we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, uh, roll call, please. Uh, Commissioner Kevin Healy. Present. Commissioner Hans Buders. Present. All right, that concludes the roll call vote. Okay, um, the next item is comments from the public. Um, Gabby, are any members of the public either in person or on Zoom wishing to speak? There's no one in person and no one online. Okay. Um, we are then going to move to item four, which is um, approval of the minutes from our meeting on September 18th, 2023. Um, move approval. Second. And I don't know that we need a roll call. I, I mean, I guess we do. I mean, let's let's do a quick roll call. Okay, Kevin Healy. Kevin Healy. Yes. Sorry, I had a technical difficulty. Yes. <laughs> no problem. Hans Buder? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, the motion passes. Um, we are going to move to item five, which is um, information items. Uh, but, you know, I don't know, Zulika, is, did you want to pause for a minute and just um, introduce folks before we jump into this or? later on. Well, we can let them do it, I guess, when they get to the report. So for the finance report, we have Michael Underwood and Kimberly Sheehan. So, uh, Mike. Good evening, everybody. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Nice seeing you. Uh, we're giving the finance report for the month of November. Uh, first item up, up Kim, who is heading up the uh, audit work, even from when I wrote these words uh, not too long ago, about a week ago, uh, we've had significant improvement. So Kim, why don't you walk us through? Okay, um, there's nothing happening right now in the Michi audits. Um, HDC 22 is closed and we're working with BDO to um, get all the adjusting entries in so we can get the new trial balances roll right into 23. King City 22 is closed. Um, King City 22, 23 is um, all the open items have been given to the auditors. So hopefully we'll have a draft by the beginning of next week. Tynan 22 has been finalized. Um, the Parkside capital contribution, that was the third capital contribution, I think. That one is completed. The Hackham 22 audit should be finalized this week. Um, and then once it's finalized, then the HDC has to go through first so we can start um, the 23 for Hackham. Um, um, Pueblo Del Mar 23 is finalized. Um, the FLCs for 23, we received the draft today. And we're hoping that we'll know more by Thursday when we have a meeting, but we're hoping that we have that by next week. And I think that's indicative from what was written in the words to the fact that she was able to show so much change. Uh, I think that's uh, terrific. So, Ken, thank you for the work you're doing and for the guidance you're giving to the uh, team. Do you want to just mention about the uh, suggestion we got from the auditors about taking uh, 
changing our reporting unit. Oh, the, the auditors for the HACM audit, um, they suggested that we remove Michi as a discrete component unit based on Gadsby 14. Um, they said they, they no longer qualify as a discrete component unit and that we can remove them from our audit. So we signed a memo and sent that to them today. And we ran that through our uh, consultant uh, to get his opinion and seemed to be in good shape in accepting that suggestion. So that's done. Uh, November was a good month. Uh, when we get down to the financials, you'll see some very positive numbers, but as far as kind of in the the, the guts of the organization, this was our second month that we were working with BDO. Uh, it is getting smoother. We meet with them three times a week on the uh, weeks that we work five days, and we spend 15, 20 minutes each time, and we stay alive. And uh, as I've mentioned previously, they're doing approximately 20 properties, and uh, bringing other key accounts like our cash accounts and so forth up to date, up to date, uh, which is just so super important and uh, good decision to go with BDO and helping the agency move forward. As mentioned previously, we're using a tool called called Smartsheets, and we want to uh, use it as kind of our backbone of communication between us and the auditors and within our own department. We use that for tracking audits. We use it for tracking all of the journal entries that we do every month, which are literally, I don't know if you know the total number of journals we write every month, it's gotta be over 100. Mm -hmm. uh, and so knowing who's doing each and what statuses it is in, whether it's completed or not, is critical so we can uh, stay on track. So just having such a great tool they do offer a calendar function. Uh, we're doing an evaluation and we'll share that with Zulika as to whether or not we're interested in adopting it. It's not cheap, but uh, it might be if it was used throughout the organization. If you think of all of the different organizations within Hackham, uh, they could potentially put their own calendar into the system where you could literally track daily, weekly, uh, quarterly, annually, all the different uh, requirements that you have to do. And so it makes it easy for the executive director to simply look into the calendar and see what her staff is uh, planning on accomplishing in the near term. And I think it would, we'll, we'll see whether it uh, is something that Zulika wants to use, but it, interesting to see the technology evolving and how it could make life for us uh, more organized, fewer surprises. Again, uh, Zulika signed the contract, and so we're going to be impacted in finance with the pay scan implementation that will begin soon when we have a work, work project plan from our a contact at Yardi, and that'll be good. That'll be bringing us uh, to more paperless processing of accounts payable, and we touch a lot of papers, so this should uh, help us be more organized, and it will be interactive interconnected with the purchasing system so that you, uh, one of our major pushes right now is to make sure that we follow proper procurement policies and make sure that we use purchase orders on any amount or transaction that where it's applicable. And uh, we want to have visibility to what people are purchasing and being able to go online and see everything that's in a, a requisition gives you the ability to see uh, what money might be needed in the future and, and uh, measure your cash requirements. So it's just best practice. And uh, we're gonna be meeting tomorrow with Yardi to get help from them to make sure that we're using the system correctly. So that'll be a, a positive step forward. Um, we, as far as procurement, uh, they, we've had three RFPs out, and then each RFP is for required if you have a expenditure of greater than 100000 and we've had uh, three RFPs be completed in the last couple of months. They're a lot of work. Uh, 
takes a lot of uh, effort by a number of people. So uh, we've had one for legal because we wanted to uh, retain a, a council, sort of a general council. Uh, we already have council for personnel issues, but this would be someone who would help us in a, a broader environment. We have a landscaping RFP out that's uh, right now we just have to choose which supplier we want. And then the large project that's going to be done. Uh, is it PDM? Have I got my letters right? Mm -hmm. Which uh, is going to be millions. So that'll require uh, having a general contractor and a lot of controls in place to track the money spent. And so we've had those three RFPs, legal, landscaping, and a general contractor. And the general contractor is the least far along in the sense that uh, it's been, it's out into the public, but we're waiting for responses. Landscaping, we're basically done. And legal, we're basically done. We just really have to choose who we want to go with. Uh, we have to in interview them yet, but uh, we have candidates. So from the, the numbers side of the month, November was a good month in the sense that uh, a lot of the hard work that's been done in Section 8 has led to an increase in our uh, payments for our vouchers. And the, the books basically record uh, the subsidy that comes from the government uh, as revenue. And we had in November, $8.8 .8 million in revenue, $3.4 million favorable to budget. So it gives you an idea of the, the magnitude of the pickup that Zulik has been able to have. Now that pickup is probably indicative of a catch-up, I would call it that. Uh, I'm not sure, and I do, do not believe it will be that number in December. I know that it will be less, but this was somewhat of a catch-up payment. Year to date, we're at 32.6 million or 5.7 favorable. And that's that's all good news, as I said, indica indicating uh, more efficiency and uh, more throughput through Section 8. As far as expenses, of course, when the largest expense is the paying out of the voucher funding, the half money. So you, you see, as revenue goes up, of course, expenses are going to go up. Uh, similarly, in November, our bottom line surplus was 2.4 million, and our budget would have, was about break even. So that is completely a, a favorable variance. Year to date, we're at 2.5 million, uh, which is about 2.7 favorable to the budget. So I think as far as November went, it was great, and I think year to date we're in a very solid position based upon our recent performance. Uh, on the other side, we have HTC, which uh, is trailing in its receipt of uh, funding that comes from waterfalls and those types of activities. Uh, year to date, our revenue is 1.17 million or 1.3 million unfavorable. So going in the opposite direction relative to Section 8, uh, the year to date, deficit for HTC is about 0.56 million and that's 1.64 million unfavorable. So it's it's a significant uh, difference. I'm hoping that we'll see uh, us picking up that uh, number improving as we go through the rest of the year as we get other payments. As we're doing certain types of projects and, and we're having uh, audits that are being completed that will allow us to uh, receive additional funding. So in summary, uh, for November was a good month, as I said before. Um, if you add the entities together, we were uh, 1.94 million positive, and the budget was 0.15 or 150,000, so significantly favorable. We beat a, basically a break-even budget. And year to date, our surplus is nearly 2 million and we're favorable a million. So it's it's good for a finance guy to bring good news to, to you as commissioners. So that's my 
quick rendition of uh, November. Any questions? <laughs> That's so cool. Too <laughs> <laughs> long? Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next time I'll, I'll be square root. How about that? Commissioner Healy, do you have any questions for Mike? No questions on that expeditious uh, recitation from Mike. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Um, I don't have any questions either. Um, thank you for the comprehensive look at that. Um, we're going to move on to the property management report. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Sakura Vasquez. I'm one of the property management supervisors in the PM department, um, and I'll be presenting to this evening. Um, you want to introduce show? Oh, no. oh, and I'm so sorry. <laughs> and to my left here is Sandra Rosales. She's also a property management supervisor in the PM department, and uh, we work great together. <laughs> um, so uh, for the month of December, uh, property management had several goals, um, which several of them were completed. Um, we completed the yardy training for the property management uh, managers um, on December 13th and 14th. And that was really a great training. Um, the yardy representative provided us with a lot of shortcuts that we uh, were available to us to be able to work on certain items um, in yardy that we weren't aware of. Um, so that was very helpful for us, like, along with the refresher that they gave us. Um, also, um, <clears throat> we did complete the RFP for PDM. Um, it's in the process um, and we are pending a uh, interview for the, the rehabilitation. Um, so that is in, currently in process. I don't have the exact dates of everything, but we are going to have um, a date set for questions um, and a date when it should be February 5th is a date that everyone needs to submit their pro uh, proposals. Um, we've also started the process of the setup of the inventory at the sites. Um, and we've also began to collect all the necessary um, information to complete welfare exemptions that are due at the beginning of the year, um, along with the AOCs and POPs. Um, we also have some goals for the month of January, which include um, working on obtaining the occupancy clearance certificate for Puerto La Vista, um, which I know we've been working on for a, a while. Um, and that's to allow us to uh, submit the welfare exemption form so that we don't have that high cost um, that we pay. Um, also, um, we did finalize um, completing the application for the program change to the Pueblo Del Mar program. Um, it was submitted to the Health and Human Services and um, we are just waiting for the uh, response from on their behalf. Um, also, we've completed, we're working on the completion of the installation of the computers at Casanova, Portola, Casa de Oro, and Los Ositos. Um, the desks have been delivered, so we're only pending a date so that we can have the IT department um, go to the sites and set that up for the residents. And we're also going to have um, some um, agencies that are going to come out to the sites. I believe it's um, Cecil, and legal aid for seniors that's going to be coming out to the site to assist them in setting up email addresses and assist them so that they can become familiar with the process when submitting work orders and paying rent um, in the new rent cafe program that we're implementing, um, along with completing their annuals online. Um, we also are completing this um, annual except well, annual exception forms. Um, we're also have completed submitting the file audit request for the RADs and for the FLC sites. And um, Sandra is also working on completing the rent increase notifications to the residents for the Castro, Salinas, and Chular FLC sites. Um, the rent increases were approved by the USDA department. And so we're just in the process of notifying the residents and implementing that change. Um, for King City Migrant, the rehab continues at the site. Um, be, depending on the weather um, is how they're completing the decks and patios, the painting and repairs. So if we don't have a lot of rain, that should be completed on time. Um, <clears throat> several issues at the red sites, um, due to normal wear and tear, they're repairing playgrounds at the Cat Santini site. Um, the sump pumps have been repaired um, and are currently working at 44 Natividad. 
Um, <clears throat> we also were able to um, determine where we are going to be able to um, house the inventory for the sites for maintenance. Um, and that's going to be discussed with Sulika. Um, Haciendas one through four, they continue to have the repairs on the decks are being completed and they're continuous scheduled. Um, and they're also working on the replacement of water heaters at um, Haciendas one and two. Um, we continue to have issues with the water tanks, the tankless water tanks, because they are very old or out of date. And it's very hard for maintenance to acquire uh, replacement parts. So um, that is something that, that um, we're currently working on, uh, replacing those units. Um, let's see. Um, also at Casanova, we've, um, we're working on the control panel um, that for the front door. Um, that's been replaced and we're currently working on cam the installation of the cameras. Um, the cameras, um, they tend, they seem to be working um, in order to deter the, um, the constant fire alarms. Um, the, they've been pulling them and it has, that activity has actually decreased. Um, and the fire department has been in contact with us, letting us know that they're happy to see that there has been an in a decrease in their response to the site. Um, we're still not finished with the installation of the cameras. There's still some additional wiring that needs to be completed. Um, and once that's done, um, we should have an update on the completion of the cameras, the installation. Um, we are also um, pending a visit from the uh, a vendor um, that is also going to be working on the, the fob readers, which is the fobs that are used to enter the building. Um, that is pending. Um, and we've also received some proposal for Cortola Vista, um, and those are in review. Um, at Portola Vista, we also had um, two holiday dinners that were provided by a nonprofit agency. And HACOM also provided a um, holiday dinner in December, which the residents were very happy and pleased with that. Um, and they're also continuing having Sunday tea and big bingo nights. Um, Pueblo Del Mar, we're currently still working with the families. Um, most of them are um, vacating. We're expecting them to vacate towards the end of January with one remaining family. Um, one of them has received their Section 8 voucher. The rest, we've been placing them in um, units at our RAD sites. Um, we've also noticed the officer at the site and the caretaker as well, um, that they will be needing to vacate um, once, they, um, once the new program is in place. Um, also, um, I mentioned that the rent increases from rent USDA were approved, um, but we are also working on the out of occupancy units at Salinas and Chular FLCs, um, and that's just in progress. Um, and we have no, currently we have no new hires, and we have six evictions um, that are with our attorney for termination. That most of those are for non payment of rent and non compliance. Um, and then we also are still currently working on our rent collection. Um, currently, we're at 97%, um, but we still work to um, get a higher um, collection rate. Um, and I think that's all I have for the report. Um, unless any, does anyone have any questions? A little long, sorry. <laughs> Commissioner Haley, did you have any questions? No questions. Thank you, Sakura. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks, Sakura. I, I didn't have any questions either. I thought that was was a helpful rundown. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, we're going to move on to the development report. Good afternoon, commissioners. Um, I'm Nora from the development department. Um, two highlights for the department. One park site, now that we have successfully submitted our conversion. We're working on our place and service package. We're working to wrap that up in the next week or so. Um, and then we'll move on to 8609s after that for our final capital contribution. We're working on a few potential projects that we have in the pipeline. Some exciting news coming down the, down the line. We're working with potential partners with the city, the county, and a potential development partner on those various sites. Uh, we're in the initial steps of feasibility and design. 
we're exploring funding options and preparing for those funding submissions. Um, we're excited about it. We're looking forward to it and look forward to providing more details as they develop. Rippling River, uh, we are in the middle of transition from property management companies from John Stewart back to the Housing Authority. We had our initial meeting with the residents in early January. The intent of that meeting was to get them on board and engaged and get their feedback and let them know what the process was and how we're moving forward. It was a good meeting. We had a lot of positive feedback. Zulika was present to lead at that meeting. And we have another potential meeting scheduled for early February as we transition that management. Um, happy news, we got a development payment in this last month and we're looking for a potential, an additional payment in the next couple of weeks. So that's revenue coming into the agency. We're also moving forward with finalizing the plan for the upgrades here at the 123 Rico Street with the funds that are left on the iClean loan. We're meeting later this week to finalize um, what the plan should look like, and they're moving forward to be able to pull that money from the states. And then my last highlight for you is the Tiny Village Modernization Project. We're about 75% complete, and our tentative completion date is February 12th. So we're getting close to wrap that up. And those are the highlights, but if you have any questions on anything else on the report, I'll be happy to answer that. I didn't have any questions on this one, Kevin, did you? No, no questions, Hans. Thank you, Nora. Yeah, thanks, Nora. Um, and then I did see a, a hand raised, so I wanted to, you know, I didn't know if this was somebody from the public, but I wanted to provide an opportunity for public comment um, if we have someone from the public. Um, if so, uh, you've got three minutes and we appreciate your comments. Thank you, Carla Lobo with CCDSA. Uh, my questions are with regards to property management um, report. Uh, we talked about some training coming down the pipeline uh, with regards to onsite. Currently, how many uh, properties are utilizing the URD system? Is it across the board and is it, um, the the invoices since it wasn't used before in Yardi, or I'm assuming it wasn't used since training is coming down the pipeline for it to be currently starting to use as far as the invoices or utilize more of the tool that Yardi has. Um, what was used prior to identify um, invoices and um, uh, AP, AP and uh, audit information? I'm not sure if that was within the property management or if that one was a finance before. Um, with regards to um, the Yardi system, is that the only system that's being utilized across the board or have there been other RFPs um, to identify other programs and other uh, tools that could be used like um, RealPage, uh, RealPage, is another system that can be utilized too and has several tools. Um, and I believe my last question is with regards to um, the financing when we talk about the revenue coming in from the government and then revenue coming in from uh, the properties. Is that illustrated differently? I, I think I caught half of what the gentleman was talking about that there'll be a mainstream program, and I believe it was Yardi, that you can now see all this uh, data, uh, the revenue coming in, revenue going out. And are those um, coded differently when we get revenue from the federal government, the HAP, versus the actual income that's coming from uh, those that are utilizing the voucher or Section 8 project base? Um, are those being identified and coded differently? Um, currently, or will that be done in the future? I yield the rest of my time. Um, thank you for your comments. Um, you know, it's typically it's typically not in uh, public comments. Typically, not interactive. Um, you know, in that way. Um, but uh, I guess I'll I'll hand it over to 
to you, Zulika, um, if you had anything you wanted to respond to there. Otherwise, feel free to uh, um, respond directly um, offline. Okay, well, no, I can just respond to the, these two questions. Uh, the Yardage system is the system that's been in place for years. It was awarded through an RFP process, and it's the system that's used throughout the entire agency. Revenue uh, that we receive from the government and then the money that's expensed for the Section 8 prior, uh, programs, they have different D GL codes and different FDI FDS item numbers. So they are separated according to the accounting and GASPI rules. Okay. Um, thank you, um, Carla, for those comments. And, and thank you, Zalika, for um, some of those responses. Um, this was a pretty uh, abbreviated committee meeting here. I think that gets us through most of the agenda. Um, we're going to move on to commissioner comments. Uh, commissioner Healy, did you have um, any comments um, tonight? I would just say thank you to Mike and to Nora and to Socorro for their reports and look forward to seeing everyone at the board meeting. Yeah, I, uh, I appreciate the, the effort from staff and um, I know Zalika, uh, we've been in touch on a few items over the past you know few weeks here and um, appreciate all the hard work, you know, over the holidays and, um, and I'm excited for our upcoming board retreat, uh, which I think is going to be, um, extremely helpful for setting some, you know, long-term strategic goals for the agency and, um, uh, you know, Socorro and, and Sandra, thank you for, um, you know, picking up the torch here. Um, and with that, uh, we are going to adjourn the meeting here at 534. Um, hope everybody has a great night. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you.